Welcome back, everybody. This is a short tutorial on how to use uh, code blocks in Tinkercad to be able to create your letter block assignment. Let's check out how we can do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look up Tinkercad. Go to tinkercad.com. From there, uh, I should have signed in. If you sign into Tinkercad, you should be able to see all your previous projects here. I'm going to create this project in code blocks over here on the left hand side. So you can click on code blocks over here on the left and then click on create new code block. And this will allow you to create a new project using code blocks. Now I'm going to create a new design here, clicking on new design. And if you've never used code blocks before, the basic way that this works is you can add objects over here on the left and different types of code over here on the left. You can see the object that you're modeling over here on the right hand side and here in the middle you can see the code that you're actually manipulating. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going, oh, the other thing that are, there is up here on the top right, this is how you can actually run your code. So if you press play up here, this will actually run the code that you have. Um, you can move forward just one step in your code by clicking this. You can reset your code from the top down, clicking this. And you can change the speed at which your code runs with this speed novel here. So I'm going to start off by creating an object which is going to be the code block. So, or uh, just the, the main block that I start with. So I'm going to start by going down here to where it says modify. These are these purple blocks are your modify blocks. You have control blocks, which is like looping. You have math blocks and you have comments down here on the very bottom. You can click over here in the far left region to, to just snap to some of these, uh, these regions that have different code. So I'm going to start off by creating a new object. So I'm going to click on that and just drag the code block right here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this code easier. There we go. All right, so as far as creating new code or a new object, I'm going to call this object. I'm going to rename it, so I'm going to click where the little drop-down menu is here. And I'm going to rename this to main block, like that. So this is going to be the main block that I mess with. From there, I'm going to add a cube. So I'm just going to grab a box up here on the top. I can click and drag that. I'm just going to clip it down until you see these little bubbles that are right here. You can see that I can snap this into this area to snap it to this object. So now. This cube is part of this new object called main block. All right, from there, if I press the play button up here, you can see that it's going to create this block and it creates it from the center origin point. That is where these three axes join together, the red, green, and blue, or X, Y, and Z axes. So from here, if I wanted to uh, manipulate this block, I can do that. There's some parameters that I can find in here. Over on the right-hand side, I can click on this and look at that, there's some different sizes that I can do. There's width, length, and height. I'm going to make each one of these 50. There we go. And now if I press play, I can see that the size of my block has significantly increased. Cool. Now what do I want to do? I want to cut some holes around the outside of this box. I want to make it to where each section of this box has like some indentations that uh, are cut into it. So to do that, I'm going to cut some holes. So let's see how I can do that. I'm going to add another block here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to loop this command. So uh, actually, I'll show you how to do that. First, I'm going to make one hole cut. So I'm going to go over here and go add. And instead of making a, a solid box that I'm going to add here, I'm going to add a hole. And you can see right here, right next to where the add box is, there's two things that you can do. One is to change the color of the box. So if I click on the solid dot that you see here, like let's say I wanted to change the color of this box up here. I can click on the color right here, and then I can change the color to whatever I want it to be. So if I make it blue, for example, I can change the color to blue. And now when I press play, you can see that that box is blue. Now this next one down here, this is how I can create a hole. So right here, this, uh, this dot right next to where the color dot is, where it's kind of like transparent uh, stripes, that is to make an object a hole, or a Boolean, if you want to think of it in terms of stuff that we've already played with. It's going to cut the region that I choose here out of the other object. So I want to make this slightly smaller. I'm going to make this hole 40 by 40 by 40, just to make it to where I have like a, a region of 10 around here. Maybe I'll even make it 45. 45 by 45 by 45. There we go. Now it's going to make a hole uh, that is 45 by 45 by 45. So actually, it's going to make the hole inside of this box, and you can't even see it. Oh man, well I'm gonna to have to move this object. If you wanted to move an object, over here on the left hand side, you're gonna see something that says under the modify section, we have move, rotate, scale, and copy. 
hey, these are all the stuff that we've already kind of played around with in Blender. This is some of the stuff that we might want to work with. So I'm going to move this object simply by clicking on this and moving it and dragging it in here. Now keep in mind, when you use modify blocks, it's only going to modify the object that it is connected to or the last shape that it is connected to. So I'm going to move this, oh, I don't know. Let's move it five in the X direction. And I'll press play and let's see what happens. Ooh, there it is right there in all of its glory. It moved over five. And now I can see the hole that has actually moved in the positive X direction here. Now, how do I get this to actually cut out? I can see the hole, but I want to cut it out of my other object here. Well, to do that, you can go over here to where it says create group. And I'm going to snap that to the bottom of this. So that means now it's going to create this box. It's going to create this box, move that, the box just above it. And then it's going to group all these things together. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, oh, look at that. It made a box and it cut out the inside of it. Excellent. Now, I might want to move this hole to where it goes out farther. So I'm going to move this. Instead of making it just 5 in this direction, I'm going to make it 40 in the x direction and try running that now. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, there we go. Oh, it's still a little bit too far. I'm going to make it 45. I'm going to make it move 45 in the x direction. And now we can see that when we move it, it's going to move that object and then cut it out. And now look at that. That looks great. That's about how much I wanted it to be cut out so it has indentation around the outside. This is just like if you did an inset in Blender and then extruded inwards five centimeters. All right, cool, except it's more exact because I'm telling it to happen in code. Now, the next thing that we might want to do is I might want to repeat this. I might want to make this happen over and over again, but I'll spin the block so it chops out this area on all the different sides of the block. To do that, I can use a loop, which is this control area right here. I'm going to grab the control repeat certain number of times. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it around this stuff right here, which is the uh, adding this block in here or, or subtracting the hole, creating the hole and then chopping it out. However, what I want to do is I want to, rep I want to move the entire block. I want to turn it a certain, uh, I want to rotate it around the Z axis. So that way it spins, that way I can cut out this section all, uh, all around the outside. So I'm going to make it, after it creates the group, I want to rotate around the, uh, let's see, rotate it around the Z axis by 90 degrees. All right. And right here it says from pivot. If you don't specify where it's spinning from, it's going to spin from the middle of the object. But you can tell it to rotate around a certain area or a certain region, much like if we were to create a, a uh, origin point in Blender and rotate it around an origin point. It's the same, uh, same kind of idea here. So I'm going to make this happen four times. Let's do that. So now it should spin the block around and it should cut four holes. Let's check it out. There's the first one. Then it turns it. There's the second one. It turns it. There's the third one. It turns it. There's the fourth one. It turns it. And we've got all four sides chopped out there using just some code, using repeat block which basically means that it's doing the same thing over and over again. Now this is great, except uh, I want the top part to be chopped out too. So that means that I'm going to want to rotate this whole object around, oh, let's say the Y axis. I'll spin it around the Y axis. So outside of my loop that I have here, after it's done with this loop, by the way, let's look at how this loop functions. When I press play, you're going to see that the, the code actually shows you when it does each step and uh, how it completes it. So you can see that when it does a repeat block, it starts at the top and then it goes down to the bottom of the repeat block, then it pops back up to the top and completes that until the loop is over. So let's take a look at that one more time. We can see that it goes down to the bottom, then it starts back up at the top of the repeat block and it goes down to the end. So this is how a repeat block works. It just stays in this cycle until it has completed this many times. All right, cool. Now what I want it to do is I want it to rotate around, let's say, the x-axis or the whatever axis we want. I could do the, this is a square, so it doesn't really matter that much. I'm just going to go to rotate. I'm going to grab this whole object. Keep in mind that I'm putting this outside of the repeat block here. And now I'm going to do something two more times. I'm going to repeat this whole process, but I'm going to repeat it two more times. And instead of having it rotate around axis Z, by 90 degrees, I want it to go by 180 degrees because I want it to spin around one time. So let's take a look at how this is going to look. 
It's going to cut the holes out of all this section. Bam, 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 bam. There we go. Now it's going to turn it on its side. There we go. And, oh, looks like I just missed it. I used the wrong rotation here. I ro rotated it around the x-axis. Let's try the, the z, or let's try the y-axis instead. Now we'll try running it. So as you can see, it's cutting out all four of these sides here. I'm going to pause it when it gets to the rotation point here, right here. All right, so there we go. Now I had it rotate around the correct axis. Let's go just to the next step here and see what it's going to do. It's going to make a block, move it out here where it is empty. Then it will chop it out. And now it should spin all the way around the Z axis, which means that it's going to flip all the way around. And then it's going to do that loop one more time. There we go. Awesome. There we go. Now I've cut out all the different sides. You can see that this one bit of code allowed me to chop all the different pieces out using a whole function, essentially. Now I just need to add some letters in there. So I'm going to create a new object here, and I'm going to call this letters. We name the variable to letters. All right, so what do I want it to do first? I want to create some text. So if I go in here and I grab text, I can chop this in here. And from there, uh, you can see what the different uh, parameters of this are. I, it'll be called text to begin with. I'm going to use a letter, so I'll use the letter Z. You can change what you want your height to be. I'm going to change the height to be exactly the same height as my, uh, as my letter block. There we go. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to turn the speed up here on this parameter so that way it goes through all this code really fast so we can just see what the last step is. I'm going to press play. And there we go. And we can see the letter here on top. Now keep in mind when you create an object that has a height, it does it from the top and the bottom. So that's something to keep in mind there. We've got a letter block and it's showing it from the top and the bottom there. Now, if I want to scale this up, I can use the scale command, which is right over here. Use scale, drop that in there, and I can make this like 1.5 in X and 1.5 in Y and 1.5 in Z. Actually, I want, I want my Z to be exactly the same because I want it to be this tall. But maybe I just want to scale out my X and Y. So let's try it. And running that. There we go. We can see that my Z has now been scaled in the X and Y directions. I've stretched it in the X and the Y directions. In fact, that's not quite enough. Let me try two on each of these and try running that. Ooh, that's closer. That's more what I want. There we go. Excellent. Now I want to do the same thing, except the uh, same thing that I did over here where I, I created these objects and I rotated them around. So I'm just going to do that same thing here. I'm going to take this object and right click and duplicate. And you can see that I have all the code that also modifies this object. So it's going to be exactly the same object. But I want to take this object and I want to rotate it around, oh, let's say, yeah, the x-axis by 90 degrees. That's cool. Let's try running that. And now we can see it made a duplicate of the object, and it rotated around the x-axis. Awesome. All right. I want to do the same thing, except this time I also want to rotate it around the z-axis. Uh, so let's try that. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis. And if I do that, ooh, what do I got here? I got another letter block over here, except I might want to turn this around. So right now I've got it in the right spot, but I want to rotate this around the x-axis as well, so that way it, it shows up facing upwards. So I'm going to add one more rotation block and move it around the x-axis. If I press play, ooh, there we go. Looking nice. We've got some pretty good looking text here. Now these ones back here are backwards. Uh-oh, so I might want to make it to where this particular letter, maybe I don't make it quite this size. Maybe I make it half the size and I move it out a little bit and then uh, I duplicate the other one and flip it around the axis. There's different ways that you can complete that. But now we have our general letter block here. Probably want to do a little bit of extra coding to be able to flip these around and move them. Just so you know, moving objects is just the same as rotating them around, it's using the move command and you can tell how far in the centimeters that you want to move it along the X, Y, and Z axes. All right, so now that I've done this, what can I do with this model? Very cool that I've made it, but let's just say that I'm all complete with it. Uh, I, I would want to go back here and change these, uh, these sections back here before I complete it, but I'll show you uh, basically some of that a little bit later. Right now, let's say that this is done. I'm going to rename it. So up here on the top left, I'm going to call this 
letter block Z. That way I have it uh, saved and this is what the name of the project is. Then up here I can change and click on export and I can export this as an STL. Ooh, look at that. That means that I'll be able to import it into Blender and I'll be able to even do stuff with it in Blender. If I make it in code here, I could potentially animate this bad boy by importing it into Blender as an STL and then be able to play around with it a little bit. I could even animate